Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chief Technology Officer, Cloud Foundry Foundation, Chip Childers. Good morning. Andrew, Andrew took my joke. But man, there's a lot of people who managed to get up this morning. Congratulations. Um, so as I said, I'm from the Cloud Foundry Foundation. Um, we're the home of uh, the upstream platform projects that Pivotal is one of the major commercial distributions of. The Cloud Foundry application runtime, which is what you all know as um, you know, PCF, or I guess now PaaS, uh, but also the container runtime, as well as Bosch, and a whole bunch of other wonderful projects that extend, enhance, and grow the basic platform that are used by all the various distributions of the system. Um, one of the things that, that our community is very focused on and continues to be really focused on is what is the developer experience? How do we improve that developer experience? You know, we have this term, freedom to create, right? And the idea is that with a good platform, you as a developer in the enterprise have the freedom to create because you get a lot of the, the things that you really shouldn't have to worry about out of the way. But we're, we're also open source, and this is actually what I want to talk to you about, um, to give you some of the, an idea of some of the challenges that a large-scale, global, open source project has to deal with. And maybe see if there's some things that could apply to your own organizations, because I know there's people here that are from very large multinationals. I know that even as an individual contributor to an open source project, there can be lessons in, in empathy, lessons in iterative learning that could apply to you and the way you interact with others. So I'm going to start, though, with uh, reminding everybody of the notion of a positive sum game. And specifically, just in general, there's this thing called non-zero, a great book uh, written by Robert Wright. In this book, he talked a lot about how the history of civilization is actually a series of progressively larger scale positive sum games that have been played out. That starts with the family unit, figuring out how to work well together. We then move to tribes, and then over time we created city states, eventually nation states. And today, in some aspects, we work as a global community to solve, solve problems or come up with solutions that are in a global nature. And open source itself is a positive sum game. The whole idea of collaborative work, collaborative effort, creating something that's greater than one individual or one company can do by themselves, this, this is what open source is about. But the problem is that sharing is actually really hard. It's extremely hard. If you put it in a commercial context for an organization that's going to be maybe distributing this software, one of the worst things that could happen is that if you contribute something, it gets used against you in the market. Now, that might not be applicable to most of you that are here, but in your own enterprise, think about the different constituencies and some of the internal politics that we all hate, but it, it exists in companies. Sharing is hard. Sharing puts yourself out there. Sharing actually could make you vulnerable, but if you remember that it's a positive sum game, you can get a lot more out of it. And the, the basis of how you do this is you need to understand that it's all about trust. Trust, the absence of trust, the process of bootstrapping trust, and the process of maintaining that trust is at the heart of what shared research and development is all about. But there are some challenges that, that I actually want to talk to you about. It's not all you know, rainbows, pixie dust, and unicorns. There are some really hard challenges that you have to overcome through the process of, of building trust, of working together. So let's start with something that, that I, I think is perhaps one of the most difficult for an individual that's participating in, in open source activity. How do you lift yourself up above the fog of the confusion of your day to day, right? Everybody has goals. You have, maybe you have OKRs, maybe you have key performance goals for your company, maybe your company has revenue goals. That's going to really be very difficult to, to see beyond, but you have to find a way to elevate yourself above that fog. Um, so let's make it really concrete, and we're going we're to talk about it in terms of commercialized open source. So if you imagine you have a company, and that company is trying to solve a problem for all of you wonderful users that are out there. You are the market, because you're probably going to buy it from them. They're going to form some type of product strategy. And at the heart of it, if they're using open source as, as one of the tools in their R&D model, they're going to include a project strategy. Now, that seems simple, but then you start adding in additional companies, and you could start seeing there's overlap. Maybe there's, in fact, overlap and competition in the market. You add a third, and you basically have my nightmare. This is very, very difficult. Now, if we pull all of that commercialization out of the picture, 
and we focus on what's actually the collaboration. We can use empathy, we can use learning, and we can use a shared understanding of what the collective goals of the end users look like to create a shared project set of goals. What is the roadmap for the whole collective project? Now, when you're collaborating, one of the things that, that we tend to do in collaboration is think about, and, and think about this in committees in your companies or uh, many open source projects will do this as well. You're gonna focus on trying to get to consensus, right? Everybody needs to agree because that's how we know that nobody's feelings are hurt and that we're gonna be able to move forward together. Consensus is extremely powerful, but it's also dangerous. So one of the problems with consensus is that it can lead to inaction. And inaction, as it pertains to software, means the software doesn't change, it doesn't evolve, it doesn't, doesn't try new things, it doesn't progress in solving new problems for the end users. So we have to avoid the concept of consensus above and beyond everything else. So we do this with two ways. One, there are rules. So if we can't get to a consensus, then, well, we take a vote, right? The, the team will take a vote, and the majority wins, everybody moves on. But the second, I think, is perhaps more important. When decisions are small, when they're iterative, when they set you up to learn as a community, as a project team, as a product team, that allows you to know whether, know that the, the decision you're making, even if it wasn't something everyone agreed to, is going to be tested. And you're gonna be able to course correct maybe a month later. And you're gonna continue to learn and evolve and work with your users. The last challenge that we have, <clears throat> and, and this might apply to some of the organizations here, is that we're global. We add to that not just divisions, but there are multiple vendors that are participating. In fact, there's uh, over, over eight vendors um, providing full-time employees to the project. And it's been a bit of a challenge to scale this because we're also doing it at really high velocity, releasing approximately twice a month, and with very good quality as well. And make no mistake, the Cloud Foundry community is one of the largest open source projects or efforts on the planet today. Incredibly high velocity, thousands of contributors, hundreds of thousands of commits, um, and frankly, it's a complex, complex technology stack as well, over 513 different repositories that make up the whole platform. So what we do is we take, we take a lot of the practices that many of you use in your own organizations, the paired programming model, and we apply that to open source. So we have different locations around the globe. One of them's across the street over at the Pivotal office, but this picture is actually from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, in Cambridge, it sounds like somebody from Cambridge is here. So <laughs> this is from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, and we have these physical locations where different employees of, di employees of different companies come together and they actually do paired programming. And we have nearly 200 people that are working full time on the platform. Now that's in addition to the thousands that are contributing through pull requests or issues or ideas. And for us, it's, it's it works really, really well when we can put a Conway boundary around one of the project teams that's formed, that's physically located together. But it starts to become harder when you have a larger need. You need to coordinate across project teams. You need to make sure that you're sharing with those that aren't in the room. So the lesson that I can give you with your own organizations is blend synchronous communication, real-time collaboration, with moments in time where you actually quiesce and you open yourself up for lots of comment, you ensure that you're transparent about what your plan is, and you work together as a bigger organization to head the right direction. The last challenge is, is particularly interesting because we work in one of the highest velocity sectors of the technology market today. It's the application and infrastructure platform space. Lots of activity, right? Which means there's a lot of choice for users, which means that users' needs are evolving, and so keeping up with those users is of paramount importance to us. And I think the same thing would apply to any software team or any person who's a developer or a product manager that's in the room today. You have to focus on what your users are and continue to evolve with them. Um, now, for us, there, there's always a risk that any particular technology can be disrupted. Lots of you would probably be familiar with the innovator's dilemma um, with Clayton Christensen's book. One of the things that he focuses on um, is, is not the threat or the fear of disruption. It's actually how do you avoid it? 
And he posits that the most important thing you can do is don't focus on plans for how to implement the software. Focus, on your plan, focus all your plans on how do you learn as quickly as possible about what the users need and continue to iterate. There's, a, there's another missive that was put out there by Eric Raymond years ago that talked about open source as really a choice be between the cathedral and the bazaar. The idea being that you have structured and then you have unstructured communities. And he says you need to make a choice. So we've chosen to actually pick both because we like to include lots of experimentation, lots of extensions, our large ecosystem in the process of building what is a well-planned roadmap that progresses together. And more than anything, our project teams know that they need to listen. And this goes actually back to what Clayton Christensen was saying. You need to really listen to the users. It's not just about what the user says, but it's about what is the, the, the problem underneath what they're saying. And how do you solve that core problem for them? And then you try something and you iterate. So that's what Cloud Foundry is all about. Um, obviously, here we are at, at a pivotal event. Um, they're an amazing member of our community. They help us bring together the value of the platform, the value of the open source collaboration. Um, but I'll leave you with this thought. The software is never done. The Cloud Foundry community is on a journey. And you, those of you that use it, are on a journey with us. So come with us. We need your help. We need your input. We need you to tell us what your issues are. And we need you to help build what the future is going to look like. So thank you.